Hello, everyone. I'm Zhao Chuang. Today, let's talk about Requina the Leviathan. This Leviathan model is scaled down by a ratio of 1 to 35. It is reconstructed based on the only known skull of Leviathan. It was an animal with an amazing look. It had giant teeth and a weird head. When reconstructing the head of Liviatan, we mainly relied on this specimen. But this specimen was not well preserved. After scientists carried out several restorations, it became what it is now. The skull of Liviatan looked very strange from the side. It had a tall bulge, like many modern cetaceans, such as sperm whales. However, unlike the sperm whale, this bulge looks larger. Viewed from its skull, its eyes were in a very low position. Another interesting feature is that its mouth was much curved. So it was particularly difficult for us to add soft tissues to its head in restoration. It was not as easy as we restored some reptiles, because the face of reptiles generally has the skin simply wrapping around its bones. But if you compare the skull of cetaceans with their living head, you'll find that the skull is much smaller. Their head has thick soft tissues wrapping the skull inside. The correspondence between the skull and the surface is not as direct perceived as that of dinosaurs or other reptiles. So when reconstructing Leviathan, we first need to build a skull. We do the same thing when we made this model. First, based on the relatively new restorations, we shaped its skull with the highly curved upper and lower jaws, and then reconstructed the soft tissues. When we added the soft tissues, we mainly based on modern cetaceans with a bulge on their head, such as beluga whales or sperm whales. But one big difference between it and those animals lies in the lower jaw. No modern cetacean's lower jaw could bend as much as that of Liviatan. The lower jaw of Liviatan was similar to that of the sperm whale, but the latter is not that greatly curved. When restoring its lower jaw, we borrowed ideas from the sperm whale, because on its lower jaw, its teeth were mainly in the first half of its mouth, resembling the sperm whale. The opening of its mouth actually started next to the back of its teeth, so this big bone behind its teeth was wrapped by its muscles. When we restored it, we made it like that. The front part of its mouth with teeth ends here, and the opening of its mouth is here. The other half of its lower jaw bent, and extended upward to the back of its eyes. So after restoration, you can see that its eyes seem to be in a higher position, which was caused by the extreme curve of its lower jaw. Its tower bulge on the top of its head pressed to the skin at its forehead, and extended forward to form such a raised nose. Viewed from the side, it is a round structure, but if you view it from the front, you will find that the mouth of Liviatan was very narrow. In the restoration of this part, we took reference to dolphins and beluga whales. Liviatan had a feature. Its teeth turned outward. Although, its teeth were very big, most of them were the root, and the exposed part was not as big as imagined. The biggest tooth of Liviatan known so far is a relatively big one on its lower jaw. The teeth at the front of its lower jaw were smaller. Those in the middle were bigger, and toward the back, the teeth were smaller. Perhaps only those few teeth in the middle were relatively big and the rest were small. The structure with its teeth turning outward is similar to that of today's. Many cetaceans, such as the sperm whale, during the restoration of its lip structure, we based on the beluga whales, sperm whales, and dolphins. It might have fattened thick lips, like what beluga whales have and the plump lip, wrapped the teeth on its upper jaw, so the upper teeth couldn't be seen from the side. Meanwhile, it also had some features of the sperm whale. For example, outside the teeth on its lower jaw, it might be lipless. When it closed its mouth, its lower jaw would be deeply embedded into its upper jaw, and interlocked with the teeth on its upper jaw. Of course, the sperm whale has no upper teeth. So in the restoration of its head, we experienced a complex process. We mainly used these animals for reference and presented this model in the end. Besides, we designed one nostril for it resembling the sperm whale, but further studies are needed.
Some scholars believed that its head was like that of sperm whales. Many cetaceans, like sperm whales, tend to have a slanted nostril. Probably it has something to do with the degeneration of the other nostril during their growth. Besides, let's talk about the body of Liviatan, as there are few fossils of its body, and not many materials to rely on. We mainly took reference to the shape of large whales. The most direct reference is the sperm whale. Generally, Liviatan looked like a bigger and fatter sperm whale, but it looked more elongated, because Liviatan might be more like some small dolphins, in terms of blood relationship or living habits. We can imagine this. If a small dolphin grew large and heavy, to that extent, there would be some changes in its anatomical structure. Therefore, we made it look round and clumsy, a bit like a mixture of a dolphin and a sperm whale. It looks streamlined and clumsy. As its fins are not pointed, we didn't restore its fins like those animals that can swim rapidly. We combined the features of the fins of sperm whales, but didn't make its fins as short as those of the sperm whale, but in an elongated look, just as the model finally shows. Liviatan had a well-developed cord fin, which could propel its body to swim rapidly in the water. On its dorsal side, like many whales, it had a small fin. It is still unknown whether it had fins on its hind limbs. We didn't make its body surface as wavy as that of the sperm whale, but as smooth as that of the killer whale. After all, Liviatan was an animal that could actively hunt for food. Although it looked clumsy in general and its fins might not be so sharp, its body might be still streamlined. In accordance with the fluid mechanics principle, now let's talk about its color. Liviatan was not like the sperm whale, an animal that relied on deep water. Many scholars believe that Liviatan was used to hunt for food in the shallow sea, so its dorsal side and ventral side had a significant color difference. When the sun shone on it, it would form a countershading effect. Therefore, we made its abdomen white, and its back black. In addition, on its body, we made some wounds which are not very obvious, in order not to spoil the general look of the model, but we can still see such scratches on its body. These wounds show that Liviatan was a violent animal. Good, the above are some introductions of Requina the Liviatan. Thank you all. Thank you.